In the town where I was born Lived a man who sailed to sea And he told us of his life In the land of submarines Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch any excuse to kick off a video with a little bit of Beatles. Though I must admit, Yellow Submarine is a long way from being my favourite Beatles track. Just too many drugs, boys. Too many drugs. Anyway, it's a neat musical segue into today's review of A Yellow Submarine by brand new micro brand Aquacy. Now, Aquacy are currently live on Kickstarter, knocking out their own version of the Submariner for $279 featuring a Miyota 9015 movement. This puts them in direct competition with Tissell and their Marine Diver and Phoebus with their PY007. Both watches very similarly spec to this one. So the question is, is a range of funky dial colours going to be enough to tempt you away from the more traditional brands? Let's flip the camera and find out. Let's start with a brief look at the Kickstarter campaign. Now this one's been running for a while, uh, Target has been successfully reached and breached some time ago, it's definitely going ahead. So 279 US dollars, and that's shipped if you live in continental USA, for the Miyota 9015 powered one, 364 US dollars. Now that's not much of a jump, less than 100 bucks, and you're getting one powered by an ETA2824. But really, the big appeal of this one, apart from the price, is those funky dial colors. A whole bunch of different stuff. I like the look of the abalone one, some of these mother of pearls. There's a couple of vintage ones down the bottom there, some bright colors. You don't often get subby homages veering too far away from Rolex's standard black, blue, and green, so it's nice to see a new company like Aquacy trying to do something a little bit different, a twist on the regular subby homage. And you certainly get plenty of stuff for your 279 US dollars. All of the watches come in one of these big, kind of chunky dive style flight and road cases. You get the watch itself, now I've got two. I've got the yellow one, I've also got a black mother of pearl. I've sized up the yellow, but I will show you both. Nice little hang tag there. Uh, you get a, a fully documented warranty card. There's a nice little polishing cloth. I must admit though, the instruction manual, not that I read them, bit thin. I think they probably could do with expanding that one for the production models. And you get a bunch of kit. You get the screwdriver because we have a screw link bracelet here. You also get one of those slightly brutal spring bar removers and all the necessary bits and pieces. And there is a second strap here. There's a rubber strap here as well. So, you know, a compelling package overall for 279. And we have more or less the classic Submariner set of dimensions. 40 mil case, bezel protrudes slightly. So I'm gonna call this one as a 41. You notice the size difference on your wrist visually, but you don't notice the size difference in terms of how this watch wears. It wears absolutely beautifully, I must say partly because of a very slim 12 and a half millimeters. That's the advantage of using Miotas and ETAs rather than Seikos. 47 and a half mil lug tip to lug tip, 20 mil lug width, tapering down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp, and size from my seven inch wrist, this one weighs in just under 150 grams, so a little bit lighter than your average subby homage. I should also point out there were a bunch of links I had to remove. So if you're a guy with a big wrist, maybe even eight and a half inches wrist, you should have no problem getting this Aquacy to fit. I did have to remove a couple of links on either side. So 316L stainless steel case, crown, bezel, and full stainless steel bracelet. Screw links, as I mentioned, which is nice to see. You don't often see screw links at the price point. I should note that, however, the double security push clasp is only pressed. So definitely a bit of a neg, a bit of a black mark for that one. We've got a ceramic bezel insert, piece of dead flat sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside. And it's a nice ceramic bezel insert, loomed as well. I will pop up the loom shop. So BGW9, on the hands, the indices, and on the bezel. Maybe not the best BGW9, as I have commented upon more than one occasion previously. If you're not gonna go mad with the stuff, it does tend to look a little bit underwhelming. It's not too bad, the Aquacy. It's probably not the, the worst that I have seen, but they could have done with a little bit more. But then that's my common argument. Always more loom, always better more loom than less loom. 
Case finishing is okay, pretty much on par with what you'd expect for the money. We've got a screw down crown giving this watch 300 meters of water resistance, and we've got the Aquacy logo here. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Brushing on the bracelet and the lugs is adequate, if not outstanding. Bezel is reasonably finished though, 120 click unidirectional, slightly tinny action, but once it locks in place, no problems there. But let's have a look at this dial because really it's the funky dial colors that make this one either sink or swim for you as a consumer. A nice kind of vibrant sunburst, lemon yellow color on this one. Now we have a printed dial but with applied indices, little truncated arrowheads all the way around and the Aquacy logo applied there underneath the 12 o'clock. Now that logo is a Heimatau. Now please forgive me if you're Maori and I have butchered the pronunciation of that one. It's a kind of stylized fish hook in keeping with this 1769. 1769 was the year in which Captain James Cook first landed on the islands that we now know as New Zealand. Not quite sure that there is any correlation, any particular tie-in from the owners of Aquacy other than the fact that they liked the look of the symbol and wanted to add a little bit of Maori culture onto their watch, but there you go. So applied indices all the way around, nice and subtle minute track there. Now the handset looks almost identical to the handset on the Trasca Freediver, a more vintage inspired piece that I have got a review of coming up. Perhaps a little bit undersized, a little bit underwhelming. Maybe that loom shot would have looked a bit different if the hands had been a bit bigger and a bit bolder, but hey, at least they're not Mercedes hands. You will also find the Hema Tower symbol on a beautiful looking case back, very nice indeed. So screw down giving this one 300 meters of water resistance as noted, Aquacy Professional Sapphire, 1769, and these pieces are all limited editions, limited to a maximum of 1769, this one is number 20. Movements as noted, either the 9015 Miota or the ETA 2824, both relatively similar in that they are hacking and hand winding automatic movements. I think there's a slightly uh, smaller power reserve on the ETA, they're 38 hours compared to the 42 hours of the Miota. Miota only winds in one direction, so has a more noticeable wobble when on wrist, but they both give that beautiful smooth sweep of the second hand, eight ticks per second, as they're both high beat 4K movements. The Miota will probably cost you less come service time than the ETA. Miota, arguably more accurate than the ETA in my experience, but not too much to choose between them. Pick the one you fancy based on your budget. Still with me, good because I brought a few friends along to say hi to the Aquacy. On the left, we've got the Phoebus PY007, also 9015 powered and $299. On the right, a different proposition. It's the Squally 1545 Classic, the 20 Atmos. This one is 570 US dollars, but is powered by the ETA 2824. The Aquacy's ace card is that it wears fantastically. It wears better than either of the other watches shown here. And that's because of its super slim profile. It is a millimeter slimmer than either of the other two watches here. And that mill is saved on the case back, as you can see, very little case back protrusion, meaning it sits flat on the wrist. It really does wear very nicely. And there it is sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. Sits dead flat, sits very snugly indeed, thanks to that slim profile and very minimal case back protrusion. It's a nice ceramic bezel insert, glints lusciously underneath the studio lighting. If only they had put a better clasp on this one, it would definitely be getting a couple of extra points from the rather hard to please Scottish judge. And there we are zoomed out for a little bit more perspective as if it needed some extra impact uh, other than the bright yellow dial, that one millimeter. As I said, you notice it in looks, but you don't notice it in the way that this watch feels when on wrist or from the weight. It's actually lighter than the other two I showed you as well. And those funky colored dials do look pretty good when out and about. Now the mother of pearl one, I don't think is not quite as vibrant as I was hoping for. I was looking for a little bit more punch from it. Perhaps the abalone one would be the one to go for if you were really looking to go crazy. The mother of pearl is quite mild, looks like a kind of cloudy, milky gray rather than anything too spectacular, but no shortage of vibrant options in orange, yellow, green, blue, red, etc. If you wanna play with some color on your wrist. 
So wear's great then, but I do have a few moans and niggles. Loom and clasp as mentioned. Brushing, not the best I've seen for 300 bucks. And that end link doesn't really sit all that neatly into the case. They could certainly have had a look at that. And the bezel insert itself is a little bit raised. It actually sits proud of the glass, which is slightly unusual. I don't think I've encountered that before, meaning there's a little bit of an edge there. It's not quite as smooth as it should be again. So the Aquacy then, I think it does have a lot going for it. It is a compelling package in terms of what you actually get for your cash, and it wears fantastically. But a couple too many gripes and niggles for me then to recommend this one wholeheartedly over the competition. I guess it comes down to the dial color choices. If you've been itching for an abalone or perhaps a bright green colored Submariner homage, then perhaps you've just found it. So there you have it. What do I think of the Aquacy Yellow Submarine -er then? Well, I'm a little bit torn by this one. I think it wears better than any of the other Rolex Submariner homages that I've tried. And I like the way that they've ripped off, sorry, been inspired by the more modern six digit sub with a slightly wider lugs. Perhaps we'll see that filtering down through the homage market in the weeks and months to come. But this one, few too many gripes and niggles for me. The bracelet could have fitted better. It's got a press clasp. Wasn't sure about the, the bezel insert or the loom. I guess then it is over to you. Would you buy this Aquacy over the more established models out there on the market, specifically for that range of funky dial colors? Leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.